Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tuchiyama, and this is Business in Hawaii. And today's show is devoted to a subject that is really a part of Hawaii's history and society. I'm talking about tourism. And we have our guest, Frank Hawes, who's really been at the forefront of dealing with all kinds of issues on tourism from a business standpoint, government, and academia. And he's been here for many, many decades. So he'll be talking about tourism today and how it's evolved given Hawaii's great mid-Pacific location, the best weather in the world, and a aided by Hollywood movies like Blue Hawaii featuring Elvis Presley in the early 60s, the Japanese tourism boom of the 80s, and then the recession of the 90s, and then the internet boom of the 2000s. And that leads to today, 2018. And we've had a, another bump in the middle of about 2008, 2010, a little recession there. So, Frank, welcome to the show. Aloha, Ray. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we've had a long and colorful history with, uh, with uh, Hawaii tourism. I, I, I hope we'll have a long and colorful future, too. <laughs> so that's, that's what uh, gets me motivated to talk about tourism. Well, you're, you're part of uh, tourism in, in many, many ways. And I know you have uh, seen it from the inside and have uh, lectured on it to students, of course, advised uh, major corporations and players in tourism. Let's start it out, uh, the discussion. Uh, we've had a wonderful uh, numbers in tourism to Hawaii. It's, is it going to be business as usual for the future, a bright future? Are we in crisis during, uh, uh, for tourism because of the impact on the environment and, and um, uh, many other issues? Where are we today, 2018? Well, one, one of the things we are is in control of our own future, and if we take control of it, it'll be a very bright future. Uh, the question is, uh, where, where are we? And that's a complicated question, because on the surface, we're doing very, very well. And uh, uh, you can look at the last four or five years, record growth in uh, visitor arrivals, record growth in uh, visitor spending. And uh, as I said, on the surface, that, that looks very, very good, very good. People are patting themselves on the back. The hotels have very high occupancy. They have very high rates. Right. Uh, and those rates are holding steady, so that's good. The thing about um, the future really depends on our ability to justify those rates uh, and to manage tourism in a way that uh, makes sense not only for the visitor experience but for the resident experience and that's that's where it, it gets complicated because once again on the surface things look good when you dive into it uh, it looks a little bit different and I, I'm uh, I'm a numbers person I brought along some okay. some slides right. which maybe we can start with can we put up number one there it is, and there what, it is. what so does the, that slide tell us the uh, blue line is uh, nominal visitor spending that's visitor spending before you apply uh, uh, apply uh, inflation and we've had years of steady growth, and this is where uh, the Hawaii Tourism Authority and others uh, uh, tout their horn and they say, look, look at how good we're doing. Uh, in 2017, we, we had almost $17 billion in, in spending. Wow. Where it looks a little bit different is when you uh, adjust that for inflation, which is called constant dollars, and I've picked 1984. And what you see there is a line that's, that's pretty flat. So um, once again, on the surface, it looks good. My nickname, by the way, is Dr. Doom. Uh, so even when things are looking very good, yeah. I'm saying let's look a little deeper. Right. And when you look deeper, you see that, that much more flat uh, characteristic of the line. Because uh, some government leaders and, and tourism leaders look at this and say, wow, uh, don't interfere mm -hmm. or don't touch the goose that lo uh, laid the golden egg right. here. There's $17 billion coming into this economy. We ha have unemployment at very low rates, maybe under 3%. Uh, it's hard to find people. Everybody's working. What, what is wrong with that? Well, if, if real spending is flat, if real tourism receipts are flat, 
But over the same course of those years, we see more than a million extra visitors. What you have is more wear, more tear, more congestion, more problems, more community issues for basically the same amount of money that's coming in. That's not healthy. What we need to see to be healthy is and sustainable is a real increase in uh, the economic impact uh, and then uh, a management of those negative impacts. Uh, too many people in the parks and trails, uh, too, too much uh, wear and tear on uh, visitor sites, uh, too much congestion in our neighborhoods. So those are things that require management. And the uh, mission statement for the Hawaii Tourism Authority is to manage tourism. And that's, I think, something that uh, we need to, to really pay attention to. It's not just bring them on in, get them on the airplane, get them here, but it's uh, how, do we, how do we manage the numbers? How do we manage the dispersion of the visitors once they get here? How do we manage the relations with the community? Uh, all those uh, are necessary to, to be sustainable. Because the reason why people come here from the 30s when it started to grow uh, with Hollywood and uh, wealthy uh, families from the West Coast and other uh, regions coming to Hawaii was to seek the authentic right. Hawaii experience. And what does that mean to you uh, back then? And, and that still draws the visitors from around the world. Well, things were naturally authentic. Early in the development of any destination, things are authentic because it's undiscovered. You come here and there's not a big tourism infrastructure. So when people get off the boat, the Matson boat, oh, yeah. boat days, right. uh, you have, you have uh, local kids diving for yeah. qu quarters. You got, you got uh, uh, real luau. You got, uh, you've got visitor experiences. The lay sellers, the hula, right. hula dancers at the docks. And people used to come uh, on, ca on canoes from the seaplanes, remember? Right. From right. Pan Am. I don't uh, remember. <laughs> I don't remember I've either, seen the pictures. But, uh, but uh, wow, what a, it was like, uh, you know, uh, uh, a plane to hotel you know, at the beach. What an experience. But when you get to 10 million visitors, what happens is the many of those experiences are less authentic. Many of them are contrived. Many of them are purely commercial. And we have to watch that because uh, the visitor is not dumb. The visitor will sense that there is an inauthenticity that they're seeing. And uh, once that experience starts to erode, then they're not going to pay the kind of money that we want them to, to pay for hotel rooms, for attractions, for transportation, for all those other things. People are willing to be, pay for and they are happy with spending money on um, anything that's, that's worth it. Um, I was checking hotel rates, and I think a uh, high season, uh, the average rates uh, for a hotel in Wailea, Maui, are running around $600. Wow. And I tell my students that, yeah. is, it worth, is it worth $600 a night to stay in a hotel? And the answer is, <laughs> it depends. Yeah, if you're getting a $600 right. experience for the right people yeah. who have that kind of money and are looking for that experience, that's worth it. If they're not getting that, yeah. then there are other choices they have. And the six hundred dollars uh, for an experience in Kathmandu or the Maldives or you know other uh, uh, undiscovered places, right. uh, of course, you would pay more for an experience that would last a lifetime. So how do we do that? We first of all, there are two elements to that. One is attracting the people who are looking for that kind of experience because they're the ones that are willing to pay for it. You know, if you get somebody coming to Hawaii that's only coming for the beach, uh, they're called many things. So that's <laughs> right, right. Cheap charge. Is right, one of them. Right, right. You know, they go to the ABC store, they get a, a straw mat, right. and they lie on the beach yeah. for a week, and then they go home and they say, "What's well, so special?" You know, there are beaches, right. and, and they eat at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. and, right. And so there are McDonald's at home. Experience. And yeah. there's uh, they could do that at Redondo Beach. <laughs> right. And the beach is a. Uh, at one point, Hawaii had a tagline that said, "The most beautiful islands in the world." And um, when we did focus groups about that, people said. Well, who says? And there are a lot of beautiful islands oh, in the world. Right. So yeah. you can't just be warm weather. You can't just be beautiful. You have to have something else to justify the okay. price. Let's put up the uh, second slide. This is another view of the same issue. It's um, <clears throat> uh, real tourism receipts. This is uh, inflation adjusted per visitor. Uh, and it's been declining, and it's been declining, and it's now around $1,700 mm -hmm. per visitor. This uh, chart, by the way, is uh, thanks to Paul Brubaker and Jim Mack, uh, who are two economists who are very interested in this uh, this issue. So and, uh, next slide, just show you another version of this, and that's uh, real tourism receipt. This is uh, in 2017 dollars, but adjusted uh, from adjusted up from uh, uh, over time um, per Hawaii resident. And what you'd want to see here is 
the economic impact per resident increasing. And in fact, tourism has become economically less important as a part of this economy uh, because of things like this, because of the real erosion in uh, visitor spending. Okay. Um, you know, what we wanted to do in the show, of course, is set the stage for discussion on tourism today. But of course, what you're saying is we have to look at the future, how to manage tourism, not only for the visitor, but also residents. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, back in as uh, late as the uh, 1960s, mid-60s, when I was a child uh, in Honolulu, probably the entire island of Oahu was barely 250 to 400,000 people. Right. Now it's 950, right. maybe a million people, and, and about 600,000 cars. So it's a different Oahu, different Hawaii. Uh, uh, Maui before the war was barely 45,000. Right. Now it's 100. 70, 180,000 people. Right. And most of them, again, uh, 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 transplants from the mainland. And, and even on Maui, the roads, uh, the infrastructure, housing, uh, impact the environment, the beaches, all becoming a, a major issues uh, for the residents' uh, population. And of course, this spills over the visitors who feel that there's too many people or they're not getting an authentic experience. Now, some proper, uh, properties, like the uh, most famous one, Kaanapali Beach Hotel, in the late 80s started to uh, uh, develop programs right. to really work with the staff to train them, to educate them in uh, the host culture, the Hawaiian culture. So when the visitors came there, they really enjoyed this authentic experience. And that's why the repeat experiences of uh, visitors to that property uh, through the years continued. And this was, of course, emulated by major, every other major uh, property now has a uh, host Hawaiian culture expert on the staff. What do you see for the future of, uh, uh, well, we're going to get to a break in a few minutes, but uh, l let's phrase the, question, phrase the, uh, uh, phrase the questions. Uh, are they go going to be just the private sector, a tourism industry, or what are the players who must come together to create a strategy for the future of tourism in Hawaii? Well, obviously, uh, when you have something called an authority, like the Hawaii Tourism Authority, you would expect it to have authority to make changes. And it's wonderful that uh, Ka'anapali Beach Hotel and others have taken these steps. But really, truly, to uh, leverage that, you need to invest money in it, and it's mm -hmm. got to be serious money. It's not just um, training. It is training. Right. Uh, but uh, we need to spend millions of dollars on training, training customer service. But and we're going go to come back to <laughs> this whole money thing after this break. Hello. ティックテックハワイが日本語でお届けするこんにちはハワイの日本語放送のホスト国末ゆかりです各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています日本語コミュニティハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報ニュースなどをゲストをお招
And aren't there taxes that are, uh, that are gathered in order to have programs to really develop tourism? Um, absolutely. And it's not just money, by oh. the way. There are three, uh, in my view, there are three elements to be successful into the future. One is, is uh, authority. You actually have to have the authority to get things done. Right, and, right. and we haven't had that. Okay. And I'll talk about that right. in a second. But the second is money. Right. Uh, you do need money. Yeah. A lot of these issues require investment, investment in training, investment in festivals, investment in the visitor experience, right. investors, investment in safety. Right. Uh, right. You can't, have, you can't yeah. not have safety. Oh, yes. Um, uh, Hawaiian culture, all those right. things. To do it right really requires an investment at this point. And we're at a point in our development where if, if we want to go to the next level, we have to provide a better experience, a right. safer experience, a more rewarding experience for visitor, visitor, and that all takes money. The third is a long range view, and this is why there is something, uh, a state agency called Hawaii Tourism Authority. The, um, the private sector is looking short term. The general managers, God love them, they, uh, they're, they're rewarded and they're... And these they're, are the hotel uh, managers, yes, right? The top uh, people in Waikiki and right. other... Right, or uh, attractions or any other right. person in the private sector. You're looked at your performance uh, economically and in terms of uh, one month, quarterly, right. one, one month, year. One month, quarterly, they're very so short So the term, state right. needs to look further out. I did a project in Singapore where they did a 25-year plan, oh. <laughs> which is a little ridiculous, yeah. but uh, you know, we need a longer horizon right. than, the, um, than the government does. So you asked about money. Right. So if you're going to do this, it is going to take money. That's the first aha. Okay. That, um, you know, the, some people say, well, we're doing so well, just stop spending money. Um, and that's like taking your hands off the steering wheel of a car. <laughs> you know, we, right. we will be at the mercy of the private sector in terms of who comes here and how they right. market Hawaii and how we provide an experience. So we need to make these investments. So back in 1998, when Hawaii Tourism Authority was created, there was also the t transient accommodations tax. And uh, last year... Which is known uh, as the hotel tax. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's, it, it's known as the hotel tax. Yeah. It's a little broader than that. Uh, typically for Hawaii, it's complicated. But last year, that brought in about uh, half a billion dollars. And this last year, so that's before they increased the, tr the tax by 1% to, pay, to help pay for rail. So what's happened over the years is this transit accommodation tax, hotel tax, TAT, which was meant primarily to support tourism. And it was, uh, it was imagined that as tourism grew, the receipts from that grew. Uh, the legislature, in its wisdom, looked at this and said, well, we don't need so much money to support tourism because it seems to be doing fine. And once again, remember top line? We look right, like we're right, doing right. fine. Lots but when of you, numbers, the numbers. Yeah. When you drill into yeah. it, there's some needs right. that need to be funded. But over time, the, um, the total receipts for the TAT increased to about a half a billion dollars last year, and the uh, Tourism Authority gets about $82 million. So um, does that sound like a lot of money? It does sound like a lot of money, but if you really talk about addressing some of the things like uh, parks and trails, beaches, uh, visitor safety, uh, workforce training, that's not a lot of money. Not, not, yeah, and, and when you look at the whole infrastructure, the minute the tourist uh, or visitor comes to Hawaii, they land at an airport. <laughs> the airport needs work. And there's the roads uh, to get to Waikiki. Uh, there's the sewage uh, issues in Waikiki now. And um, of course, uh, parks. Uh, you're absolutely right. There's a whole infrastructure that's outside the small budget you just mentioned. Right. And this is why uh, you need authority, you need, you need coordination because like the parks are owned by the state and the counties, but the tourism authority has to work with them to say how can we make these better experiences for the visitor. The airport is uh, managed by the Department of Transportation, state, hopefully state someday again. be yeah. a, an authority of its own, but, right. but the HTA with its bully pulpit and perhaps some budget should come in and say, how can we make this a better experience for the visitor? Maybe we do pay for training. Maybe we pay for better signage. Right. Maybe we pay for, I don't know. Right. But we need to look at all these touch points with the visitor and say, how can we make the experience better? Right. And so you're looking to the HTA to be the leader in all this? I think somebody has to be the leader. And if you're talking about the sector of tourism, it's only natural that the Hawaii Tourism Authority be that leader. They have a bully pulpit, the, and they should use it. Uh, and they have in the past, but I think we can be more aggressive with it. But they also should have the ability to uh, work more directly with these other entities or have the authority to 
address some of these problems. The homelessness in Waikiki, for example, is one aspect of homelessness in the state. Should the HTA, and, and I think next year the legislature has carved out a part of the TAT to, to address homelessness, but how do you spend that money so that it, it uh, improves the experience in Waikiki? Do you pay for one-way tickets back for some of the homeless? Do you pay for additional support services uh, in Waikiki? I don't know what those particular answers are, but that's, that's why you need somebody who is thinking primarily of the impacts on the visitor industry and how to solve those problems relative to that industry. Government leaders, uh, what do you think they think of tourism? Well, uh, if you look at uh, behavior, uh, they've cut the budget. Oh. So, uh, and maybe that's because uh, everybody's looking at this top line uh, record growth, and maybe shame on the industry. They go out to the legislature and say, look at this wonderful growth that we're having. And so the legislature says, so you don't need the money. Uh, we really need. Um, uh, government leaders and the tourism industry and the tourism authority to be more focused on, on Dr. Doom. You know, where is where are the where are the upcoming problems that we need to solve, rather than focusing on the 10 million visitors and the 17 billion dollars of of uh, receipts coming. And we need to say where where are the next issues that we need to be addressing now. That's a very good point because. Uh, wouldn't government leaders or uh, private sector or anybody that's worried or, or thinking about tourism refer to a document that would be a five-year, ten-year plan? Right. Is there such a document? Well, there have been a series of documents. Um, I, I was very instrumental in working with a group that created one of them, which was the 2005-15 plan, and we had nine strategic initiatives. Uh, we said all these things have to happen in order to, for tourism to succeed. Uh, they went through a state audit, and the auditor says, but you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, because they didn't have the authority. Oh. And so the response was, well, we're just going to take that out of our portfolio. And that's not the way to solve the problem. That's the way to address the audit, but it's not a way to solve the problem. So uh, do you think that HTA should, uh, uh, does it have the authority today, or should it have more authority to, uh, to really... Um, uh, lead the discussion for to create a better strategy and have the ability also to develop programs in partnership with the private sector and, and other parts of, uh, of, of, of the tourism industry and then have the resources to execute it. Well, all of the above <laughs> and, and more. Okay. Uh, the, all of the above is they need the authority and they don't, they don't have it. So I, honestly, I think uh, we need to look at the uh, the way things are right now and say it's not working, and maybe reconstitute um, HTA and maybe see how we can give them better you authority. Need a tourism czar, that's what you're saying. Well, uh, yeah. I didn't want to use that term, but okay, yeah, yeah, possibly. But you need either a czar or somebody that has uh, very strong influence over these other agencies and departments. Mm -hmm. The other thing you need is the funding. Um, so we've talked about that a bit. The other, the third thing that you need is a change in strategy. What worked when you were five million visitors, six million visitors is different than what you do, need to do with 10 million visitors. And now the focus in their marketing efforts really needs to be 100% uh, on higher spending visitors. Mm. And we know who they are. Right. But uh, if you look at uh, performance over the years, some of these high spending markets have not grown or they've declined as a- uh, Name a, a couple of them. Uh, weddings. Weddings yeah, has weddings. been stable. Right. But oh. while visitor industry, while the visitation has been growing, right. The number of weddings has been stable. Because now, they spend a lot of money uh, uh, doing a wedding here in they, Hawaii. But not yeah. only that, they, they stay in resorts. They stay. They want beachfront right, or right. oceanfront. They, they splurge. They, they yeah, splurge. They, splurge. They, go yeah. to, they go to the okay. fine restaurants. How about another segment? And the incentive markets. Incentive markets, are, those are the markets where you pay to bring your sales team or right. whoever set some records to the a Facebooks wonderful... Facebooks and Microsofts and, and Amazons right. and, and so And the forth. whole point is yeah. to make them happy. So they right. spend money yeah. on golf tournaments, right. on banquets, right. on shows, on all this stuff. Right. Uh, it's a small, So it's not look, going to McDonald's for the no. family. Right. I went to a... Um, after I left HTA, I went to a... Uh, uh, organizations conference called Site Society of Incentive Travel uh, uh, Executives, and I was the only person from Hawaii there. Hmm. There were people from Vegas, right. from Orlando, from uh, Anaheim. And these other resorts are, are focusing on those high spending visitor yes. segments. Right. Okay. Right. Well, well, we should be doing the same. We should be or doing better. the same. The other thing that's changed over the years, and remember, the, the, uh, I mentioned that I worked on a tourism plan that started in 2005. Well, now it's 2018. Right. The world has changed. Yeah. 
and now we can reach what I would call micro markets. These are very small markets, but we have something that's very, very um, uh, pertinent to them. Um, bird watching. Oh. Uh, do you know how many bird watchers there are? And we have yeah. birds that nobody else has seen. Of course, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they only exist in Hawaii, too. Yeah. If you've ever known somebody that makes quilts, yeah. these people are crazy. They, they love segment. quilts. Oh, yeah. And of course, Hawaii, because of its missionary heritage, right, right. not only has quilts, but it has quilts yeah. that are a different design. Wow. So through the internet, we right. can find kite surfers, quilters, oh, birders. Yeah. And they've been numbered the thousands. I mean, in, in Japan, there are... Uh, oh, I went yeah, to a quilt show in Japan, thousands. and there were yeah. 26 thousand people went to the Tokyo Dome to wow. see a uh, quilt show. But there are dozens and yeah. scores and hundreds of these markets uh, that we could never reach before, yeah. but we can reach now through the internet. And we have something very special to offer them. Yeah, so we should be uh, do doing a better job in identifying these high spending segments and leveraging the power of the internet and, and attracting them. And again, it's an authentic experience, but very, very focused. One. Right, right. It's something that can't get anywhere else. Right. But it really involves changing gears, moving your mindset away from mass markets into class. Now, if, but if we don't do all this, looking into the future, are you back to Dr. Doom? Well, it all comes back to the fact that if you can provide a valuable experience, people will pay good money for that experience. The minute the experience declines, you can expect that uh, you're going to either lose uh, uh, arrivals or lose uh, economic impact. But it's interesting, other resorts have, uh, have evolved in different things, like uh, Las Vegas uh, from 20 years ago uh, transformed into a family-friendly destination. Well, more than that, they, they were very responsive to changes in the uh, in society, changes in customer behavior. Uh, they've, there's less of an emphasis on gaming. Right, there, right now, there's more, uh, as the millennials are uh, coming into the travel market, there's much more emphasis on clubs, DJs, right. and high-end liquor. Uh, they, make, they probably make a huge amount of money on, on their clubs and DJs. Uh, and the pool experiences, the, the extravagant uh, hotel amenities, all that is uh, catering so, to So we market. have 30 seconds left. Any other places that you would like to point out for Hawaii to emulate for tourism? Well, Vegas is a good example of a place where they have an authority that has real authority. Great. They're building a, uh, an arena. They, right. they, they manage So the they're looking at the infrastructure. Yeah. Anywhere, else? Anywhere else? Oh, well, uh, uh, internationally, um, uh, certainly the Middle East. The Middle East yeah, Singapore coming Singapore. Yeah. I did a project in Singapore. Right. They're very strategic. Well, uh, Frank, we can go on forever on mm -hmm. this uh, exciting topic, and I think it's one of the most vital topics of our time today going forward for the state of Hawaiian society. This is Ray Tsuchiyama. Thank you very much.